Hey everyone, I hope all of you are having a great day and welcome to Kayan Al Bashar. Where today we are going to finish up the lighthouse and build something that I haven't really talked about before, which is the actual city of Kayan Al Bashar. Or actually, I'm going to build a couple of houses just so that you get like the general idea of the style of the city. Because there are going to be a lot of houses and just buildings that I need to build. And yes, I do realize that Planet 2 is a zoo simulator and not a city builder, but I think I've already crossed that line a long time ago. But anyway, with that being said, I wanted to also talk about, well, the lighthouse actually being a prime example of this, but please do say it if I mispronounce your name. I'm probably going to, but Terra B. Well, Terra B said that. Well, I'm good at dropping in those tiny details because, well, I kind of agree with that, but um, it's also for me easy just because of the way I built. Because, I mean, the Harbor Master's office is already a prime example of how I built it, but most of the buildings have kind of a storyline behind it. So, for the Harbor Master's office, I already talked at length about the harbor master probably being somewhat corrupt or actually very honorable like two completely different sides or two completely opposite sides actually because of that it was easier to build that building just because like oh i know who was living there and then i can like kind of make it a lot easier for myself to drop in those tiny details because i mean the station is a very bad example of this but Peace count doesn't really go into how good or bad a building is. I mean, this, as I said, the station is kind of a bad example because, yeah, that is just a mega build. But the station could have very easily turned out horrible, even though it has like 100k pieces by now. Actually, I think this area has 100k pieces by now. Let's take the lighthouse, for example. The lighthouse is actually a pretty basic building I would say. Maybe actually the lighthouse also isn't the best reference for you know building with the story behind it because uh, I haven't actually put a lot of personality into the lighthouse itself. This is mainly because the lighthouse is an actually well an actual building in real life which is also probably the reason why I don't usually do that just because I kind of sink myself out in and just want to build it as it is in real life but that's why i place the lighthouse on a kind of interesting island because the lighthouse island or actually the lighthouse i called it the tower of leander and it's also seemingly called the maiden's tower which just makes me think of game of thrones honestly but uh yeah, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the Turkish name for it because I'm going to mess that up and maybe offend someone. So I'm not going to call it by its Turkish name. But uh, with the lighthouse of, well, here it's the lighthouse of Kayan Al Bashar. But with the Tower of Leander, as I said, I can't bring a lot of personality into the actual building itself. But that's why I place it on a kind of interesting island because this is the first island that is actually multi-leveled I would say like it has a lower area and then also well you need to kind of walk up the island to get to the actual lighthouse so because I couldn't really you know do something interesting with the lighthouse or at least I didn't allow myself to do that because I wanted to actually see if I can first of all recreate a building which I probably shouldn't be worried about after the flooded ziggurat because that's actually kind of historically and realistically accurate but with the lighthouse because it's kind of separated from the rest of Kayan Al Bashar I just wanted to make a storyline of who lives here I did that with the harbor master I did that with Kane's residence and it just makes it a lot easier to bring in those tiny details that Terra Bear mentioned again do say it if I mispronounce your name because uh, I'm horrible at that but by 
envisioning someone living there and you know envisioning someone with well kind of a strong personality i would say like it makes it easier if it's a person with strong personality but with that it just becomes very easy to build for that person because most of the time a person actually also influences how his home or the place that he is in because it doesn't have to be a home but just people well influence their surroundings people want to have influence on their surroundings that's i think just a given fact we all want to have it just perfect in our own little way or as chaotic in our own little way so with the tower of leander i because it is so separated from the rest of kayan albasar i quickly brew up the storyline that maybe the person living here is either just a hermit which i mean i can sort of relate to that because who wants to leave the house but <laughs> anyway he's either a hermit or well as i said i envision kayan albashar as kind of like game of thrones politics so uh, yeah one slip up and uh, your egg well your head or neck is probably meeting the eggs i yeah let's just say uh, kayan albashar is vicious and i don't really know how i start with like envisioning stories behind everything that i built but again it makes it a lot easier because with that like oh kayan albashar might be like as vicious as game of thrones then it wouldn't take a lot of someone to be disgraced from let's say court and of course when someone is disgraced they kind of like become a hermit or go into like a sort of self-inflicted well not banishment but um what is it it has a name and i clearly am missing it but let's just say uh, he becomes a hermit by choice so that's what i wanted to build with the lighthouse so that's what i actually did with the island and not the building itself because well just envisioning like the lighthouse is probably important to kayan albasar maybe if there's let's say a sandstorm is the only way you can find kayan albasar i mean it would probably be hard to miss the towers of the station but with that i wanted to then give myself a little bit of like a free pass of like oh the building itself is pretty basic and completely pristine but then i kind of uh, went insane with the plants like i usually do but now i knew like all right this is how i want to tackle how the island is going to look so first of all it's separated by two ways like it's completely of kayan albashar or at least it's kind of separated because of the harbor that's in between but also then you have the stairs so it feels even more separated and because the stairs are not the widest like that's not wide enough for let's say a cart or some like group of people to walk by side by side maybe like a couple or let's say two individuals walking side by side but not a large group so it just helps a lot into like oh this might be a a hermit or b just someone disgraced from court who now i re remember the name or the word for it went into self-inflicted or self um let now i lost the other word for it so uh, let's just uh let's just say in self uh, inflicted exile just because he just couldn't face the other people in kayan albashar anymore so maybe this is the fate of everyone disgraced by the court of kayan albashar or just the nobles of our kayan albashar also yes um, this is probably going to be an episode or video where i say kayan albashar a lot i'm just waiting until i mess it up so with the foliage i just wanted to make it feel like this is a person who just is completely shut off from the world he does get supplies from kayan albashar because well it's an important building it needs to be well workable or serviceable otherwise kayan albashar is going to feel the results of that but with the rest of the island and the foliage f used for it i really just wanted it to really feel secluded really feel like 
the person who lives here doesn't want to see you. And I think that worked. And I'm really actually happy that um, with the sort of palette of uh, not animals, like animals are a rare thing in Kayanalba but with the palette of plants that I've built up, I can actually really easily do that. So, yeah, we are now, right now, flipping over to the city of Kayan Albashar. But I just wanted to quickly finish it up. But with the palette of nature or plants that I've used in Kayan Albashar so far, it's actually really easy to make something look overgrown, look completely neglected and such. But now to go actually into the city of Kayan Albashar. I'm not going to build everything. I'm only going to build a few very first buildings that I've built for the city because, well, I'm going to need to build, let's just say, I don't even know, 100 buildings. So I think it would be probably kind of boring to just see me like using the same techniques, using like the same pieces and just, you know, slight variants, of course, but most of the things will be somewhat similar. So I'm just going to build the very first buildings that I've built for the city of Kayan Albashar, which is actually a city street, or, well, I think there are five buildings, I would say. And I'm just, yeah, I didn't want to build everything on screen just because that would be a little bit insane. And I think then I uh, would have to postpone the cinematic video a month, because let's just say I can kind of get one of these houses out in an hour, half an hour maybe at most, or at least. So yeah, I didn't want to do that all on screen. However, I did make all the roofs kind of custom because uh, yeah, most of the roofs that we have in Planet Zoo don't really fit in with the idea I have for Kayan al -Bashar. Like, not at all. It looks just too pristine. And here is what I wanted to go with for the city. So, first of all, not as much storyline building here because, well, that would be a little bit insane. I have like a few buildings where I do that for with the city because that just makes it easy to make like accent buildings. And with accent buildings, I mean buildings that you like know the way by like it those buildings have a name or those points have a name of like how you recognize where you are in the city which is what i would call an accent building or just well it doesn't have to be an accent building but just usually accent buildings go for that or go well for that so usually those are corner buildings or something like that or official buildings but for the accent buildings, I will have a storyline behind it most of the time. With the just ordinary homes, not as much. Because, uh, yeah, I um, I can easily think of storylines, but uh, to think of storylines for a uh, hundred different buildings, that would be a little bit insane. <laughs> that uh, wouldn't be manageable. And I would probably just uh, go completely insane by the end of it. But anyway, for the city of Kahan al Bashar, they're all going to follow a little bit of the same, well, general idea of how the city is going to look. So it is actually instead of how Tinopolis was structured, where most of the houses were loose buildings. Here I can actually build actual streets buildings, or, well, buildings that we would recognize a little bit more. Because, well, I'm using references from medieval but also renaissance buildings so by then i could make these buildings also quick little detail i made sure that from the chimneys all the smoke blew in one way all away from the harbor i it doesn't really have logic behind it because can al bashar well when you think of a harbor you think of the sea so i just use that as like Oh, mostly the wind blows into the land. But Kayan al Bashar doesn't have a sea. It's basically just a dry desert, so... Doesn't make any sense, but it's just a little bit of a detail that I've 
stuff would be fun to include. But anyway, for the city of Kayan al Bashar, I kind of went for what I would call ordered chaos, which is that, well, there's a little bit of order to the buildings, and that's generally seen in like some things being similar or the same actually sometimes across all the buildings. So that means like maybe the color palette or the height of the buildings, the size of the buildings. And then I can change things in between and make it chaotic as I would say. So the order is in the similarities and the chaos is in whatever you make different. And this is why I really like older buildings because they have a lot more of that chaos factor I would say. Or at least good chaos. Or you could also just call it homely, homeliness, coziness. Like generally all the buildings have the personality of whoever lived in them. A lot of newer buildings kind of lack that in my opinion. But that's just my opinion so don't go anywhere crazy with that. But with a lot of newer buildings I just, I don't know. I just see like maybe the architect behind it but not really, well sometimes a bit but most of the time it just feels a little bit unpersonal I would say sometimes of course there are of course well differences or there are exceptions but yeah I just really like how the older buildings usually have really just the story of whoever lived in them again going back to the story because that's just important throughout all my buildings oh so the buildings that I built right now don't really have them. Actually, now that I think about it, most of the buildings that I will build now or today won't really have a story besides the Tower of Leander or the Maiden's Tower. And well, maybe actually one building has a little bit of a story behind it. But uh, yeah, this building, um, what are, do you call these things that I built right now? They are um, not canopies, they are basically just uh, something yeah whoever gets it uh, first whatever these things are called because I just completely lost the word for it gets um, gets a building let's just do that I mean I got already gave gain a building and dark a camp and uh, dark you um, are kind of an insane lemur yes you're a red roughed lemur but you're insane. Like I don't know how many times I see you pop up in like the notifications of this animal did this, this animal did this. Yeah, most of them uh, I probably can't talk about on YouTube. Let's just say uh, you get very cozy with uh, some of your... Um... Yeah, let's just stop it there. Dark, you're just an insane leaper. <laughs> but anyway, so for the building, as, as I said, Going with the chaotic order or orderly chaos, just because, well, there's just going to be a lot of clutter. Like with the, or like the Tower of Leander or the Lighthouse, if I can't bring the personality through like the little details in the building itself, then I try to make the personality by the, basically the accessories I would say for the building. So the clutter and such. And I'm really just waiting until I get to a building that actually has a story behind it. I do know that I think one of them had a little bit of a story behind it. But most of them is just like, uh, let's make this building and then make it a little bit different. Also, yes, you will see that uh, roof pop up basically everywhere again. Because I don't like the standard roofs in Planet Zoo. Or at least not for... Kayan Al Bashar. I really hope that none of you guys ever make a drinking game of like how many times do poison say this because I don't want to be responsible for you ending up in a hospital. And uh, yes, uh, today's uh, video is a lot about Kayan Al Bashar. And I uh, already said that I'm not going to build everything. In a few shots you will see that uh, what I have mapped out for the, well, what's going to be the city for the cinematic video because I'm not going to be able to complete the entire city by 
the cinematic video, just the parts surrounding the station. And yes, the my favorite vaulted ceilings are back because I want them. Also, I'm going to upload the clutter because um, I originally waited just to see like, oh, what pieces are going to be in the Arctic DLC. Not a lot actually to make clutter by. So uh, yeah, we're going to have the original clutter. So uh, let me hear it if you're happy with that. But anyway, so yeah, with the vaulted ceilings, this is actually a little bit of a building that has a story behind it because it's actually a wealthier building. So it's actually like the wealthy uh, kid on the block, I would say. Because the rest of the buildings so far, which are two, but the rest of the buildings are like a little bit more, not basic, but at least a little bit less well off. And then you have this building, which has fault ceilings, which I just think is already quite expensive. So this would be maybe a well-to-do merchant or a well-to-do noble. Or not well-to-do noble, actually probably maybe an improvised noble because, I mean, the original storyline behind the station, and yes, I know that I said like, oh, the D or the, well, how good a building is isn't determined by the pieces, but the station is really a bad example of that. But the original storyline behind the station was that it actually went across the disgraced noble story. That maybe the station was formerly a palace and was kind of like a rival to the Sultan of Khan al Bashar, and then, through whatever means, found himself disgraced. And now, maybe he is the one living at the Tower of Leander. Yes, I don't know how I sometimes come up with these storylines. I don't know how I started with it. It's just a little bit of fun that most of you guys won't really see like you can't really put a story into planet 2 you can only imagine it and now i think about it i kind of built kayan al bashar and tianopolis actually and basically everything i've built maybe not so much ozaru but then ozaru was also a little bit of a time crunch but i basically built it a little bit like an rpg world like i just imagine you as the viewer as the character or the main character who basically is an explorer in this world or you're just a reader of some kind of fancy novel placing itself in Kayan al Bashar. yeah that might be it but anyway so as i said the station actually has a storyline behind it and um that's actually also where the name of the station is going to come from. Because by now it's not going to be Kayan Al Bashar Grand Central Station. That name has been dropped I think uh, three videos ago. I think when we started on the harbor I already had the new name for it. I'm not going to reveal it until the cinematic video of course. I mean you guys can guess. I already gave you a little bit of palace. That's one third of the name. Damn it. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, the storyline behind the White House, as I would call it. It's not going to be the only White House, but uh, yeah, it's a well-to-do merchant who might be involved with the corrupt harbor master because he, well, he's a merchant. You would want to be great friends with a harbor master because his wares go through there. I mean, you can't really see it in the building, but uh, it was fun to build with that. And it just, yeah, it really makes it easy to get those tiny details. Because, again, a building doesn't have to be large, doesn't have to be like a thousand K pieces. Actually, a hundred thousand K. Because most of these buildings are actually under 500 pieces. Most of these houses are maybe 400 pieces. The one with the vaulted ceiling is, of course... A thousand pieces because a vaulted ceiling takes quite a lot of pieces because it's basically an inverted dome but uh, yeah it's just fun to build with the storyline behind it it just makes it easier i mean with kane's residence i um uh, it was also just a lot easier to build because well actually kane's residence was really easy because uh 
I actually talk to the guy. <laughs> or at least talk, I, uh, talk to him on Discord, I would say. So, yeah. How is the... Well, I think in the comments we have now named her she Doc, but how is she, again? <laughs> but anyway, I should probably get back to the building, so... Again, I'm not going to build everything on screen, and... Actually, this was built before the Arctic DLC came out, so... There are not going to be any pieces of the Arctic DLC in here. And... Yeah... I... I have seen the... Um, frustration, I would say... With the Arctic DLC. I... Don't know if I'm the right person to talk about it, because I probably bought the Arctic DLC for a very different reason, because... I solely bought it because of those wooden pieces. But uh, yeah, it was a little bit strange to find a lot of Christmas pieces in the Arctic DLC. And this is just my opinion, so again, don't go crazy with it. But yeah, Christmas doesn't really have to do anything with the Arctic, I would say. I mean, yeah, the old man lives on the North Pole, but... Um, Let's just say Christmas is like an international holiday. It's not something really related to the Arctic. So I don't know why it's in there. Also, yes, I do know that like the polar bear requires an entire suit. And now I'm very happy that there probably won't be any polar bears in Karan al Bashar Because uh, that island would be as massive as the station. And the station is, uh, is a thing on its own. Like it's just an entity. It's basically become alive but uh, yeah so I'm kind of happy with the Arctic DLC just because I bought it just for those wooden pieces and so far I haven't had any bugs so I'm kind of knocking on wood there because I hope it won't happen but uh, yeah I kind of understand why people are upset about it because it's just a little bit of a weird DLC so yeah I do realize that I said like, oh, let's talk about the building again. And I talked about the kind of the things that, well, annoyed me about the Arctic DLC. Yeah. I mean, this is actually what I would call going back into the building for once. An accent building, which is like a building that is built to be extra, I would say. That is really built to be like, here I am. And usually corner buildings don't really have to be built that way. They usually become that way because they are a corner building. They are usually like they just have more space because they have actually two walls that you see. Like they have two facades. And usually the connection or the corner is... Well, here I actually built what I kind of see as like the stereotypical corner building. Which is to have like an extension on the actual corner itself. And also the first dome in the street. And uh, yes, this is a failed attempt of me. Like, I wanted to make the extension a little bit larger. But um, yeah, this is where I would say my too much gene finally caught up with me. Because uh, yeah, this was just too large. It felt like the actual building on that it's connected to is just tiny so in the end I basically just uh, well let's just say scrapped this idea still going for the extension on the corner because that's like the stereotypical corner building but I went with a much smaller corner or a much smaller extension which is actually a tower because uh, yeah that's just my um, own mantra of like if something needs to look a lot higher or needs to have an accent, use a tower. For me, they always work. <laughs> and I can't stop building them. And especially with Kayan Al Bashar. So far, like, these are the first five buildings, actually. I've so far built, actually, quite a few more. I think I've built around six more. I think four of them have towers. However, this is the only dome yet, so you kind of get an exclusive here. Also, not really because I am not going to show you the six other buildings I've built, but those six buildings do have the Arctic DLC wooden pieces. 
And yes, again, like I totally understand why people are upset with the Arctic DLC because it's just... I think it's a little bit of like the wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah, going... Uh, this is some feature that you will see a lot actually in the streets of Kayan Al-Bashar. Which are these just full-on lattice being... Well, lattice windows taking up a full wall. And this is something I found out that... Those lattice windows actually light up. Like you don't have to light them up by placing lights in them, which I did for the Anopolis. These ones actually do light up. And also the lighting bugs has been fixed for me actually. <laughs> Whenever I made Kayan Al-Bashar at night, let's say with the lighthouse, the light would be bugged. So I had to delete the lighthouse, put it back in so that in the after video views you still had the light. Now that's all fixed. So there's one good thing. But anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys were able to somewhat understand my rambling behind putting a storyline into my buildings. Just so that's easier for me to put in those tiny little details that Terra Bear mentioned. Also, Terra Bear, I hope I pronounced your name right. But knowing my track record when it comes to pronouncing names and just general words, I was probably wrong. But I'm still really happy to have you here and I hope to continue to blow you away by whatever I build next. Which this coming Friday is actually going to be the airships because I'm going to dedicate a whole video to them because I've never built an airship. Actually I've never built a ship before so that's going to be interesting so please be kind to me in the next video. And I hope you all were able to enjoy today's video. If you do, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button because it does help out a lot. And I wish you all an amazing day. Till Friday where we will build the airships. Bye bye.